This is the Judge Rachel and Dr. Dorsha Show, where the law meets medicine. And we're here today, um, back with Mari and Tony, Yay. baby Yay. Olivia is asleep. So it's <laughs> <laughs> um, But we're we're here. We want to talk to them um, today about adoption. We're going to do a series on adoption, foster care, um, people stepping up and caring for uh, children either in their family or other children that need a home or just to feed that, I guess, maternal feeling that a lot of um, women and I guess a fraternal feeling that men have, especially in the same sex couples. Um, so I guess we'll let Dorsha start it all off, ask the first question. This right. Time. So which, so did both of you want kids or one of you wanted kids and talked the other one into it? So how did that, how did that discussion go? I think definitely that discussion started with me um, because um, overall I, I'm a planner and so I plan my life right. um, as well. And so I always said, you know, I wanted to have a child, you know, um, or two um, by a certain age and all of that. So I had that planned out. Um, so after I graduated um, from grad school, I said, I think it's time we move in that direction. And so um, we had to talk about, or um, we talked about really if we wanted to adopt or have, you know, a baby naturally. I did want to have a baby naturally. Um, she preferred adoption. So we kind of talked about, you know, the pros and cons of both, you know, um, which we felt would work better and, mm -hmm. you know, for that child, for our family. Um, and so, uh, initially, we went with trying to look into having a child naturally. Okay. Um, she can tell you, I guess, about her adoption. She always wanted to adopt since <laughs> she was young. I don't know. It was something in me, I guess, at the age of, I guess, as a early teen. My mom was, we were talking about kids, and I was like, I think I'll just adopt. I don't believe I ever had a notion of me wanting to carry a child, but I definitely wanted to be a parent. Mm -hmm. So. That so was, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you said you went the natural route first. So how did that work for you? Um, uh, well, we went the natural route, and of course we went with fertility. So we um, contacted a fertility clinic and started that process. Which, um, by the way, here is expensive. Very expensive. Okay. Um, okay. And unfortunately, it it takes normally takes several times, you know, attempts to. Um, to get pregnant and so each time you have to pay so it is very expensive but she was okay with it because she knew I wanted to try at least try to have a baby um, naturally and if, if that didn't work we always said we would look into adoption would be our next step so we did the fertility um, and we did several treatments and it didn't produce anything okay. unfortunately um, and so after I don't know the whole process probably was like a year because we okay. you have to go to counseling first and talk to a, um, a therapist that specializes in fertility to um, go over you know all the emotional side because um, expenses yes it's expensive but it's very emotional. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, that was massive. So how did yeah. that? How did it feel when it when it wasn't successful? Yeah, it's it's not a good feeling because right. the other part is you go like I say you have to do several attempts so right. each attempt you're there's hoping. a letdown yeah. yes you're and you're hoping and you have to take the test right. and then start all over so it, it's very emotional and it I think at whatever point the woman or if it's men involved whoever whenever you decide that it's enough you'll know right. because emotionally I was like just mm -hmm. drained yeah. yeah I'm yeah. done I'm done Right. can't do this anymore so yeah so what was the how long did it take for you to decide to maybe try uh intimate or tony's way um a maybe doctor. Maybe. <laughs> probably a year yeah okay. yeah yeah going through that process was with uh fertility it was just very uh draining not so much for me um, but to watch her go through all of that right. physically, it was it was very hard as well. So I think after about almost a year, we got on track. And okay. we actually went to, I think it was a Pride here in Nashville, 
where um, we saw an agency and I got like a pamphlet. And okay. Then we kind of just talked about it after that, a little bit after that, following year. Now, I know you guys have talked about your challenges with even adoption. So um, tell us more about that, that story and how um, maybe Olivia came about. <laughs> but first, tell us that, you know, your, your obstacles and challenges before that. Because I remember there were quite a few. Oh, yeah. I would say the, the biggest challenge, and everybody will have it, is paperwork. Okay. An adoption <laughs> is a lot of paperwork. You'll feel like you're back in school. <laughs> you have to fill out all these papers. You have to get things notarized. You have to get fingerprinted. Oh, you yeah. have to get physicals, um, background checks. I mean, there's so many things that you... get blood work done. Yes, blood yeah. work. I mean... Okay. Um, there's so many things that you have to do paperwork wise that that keeps you consumed for months okay. so when you first started before agencies will even start working with you or putting you out there for families to see they want to you know which is right. good yeah. because they yeah. want to make sure that you're appropriate as parents in every aspect so right. the paperwork was the biggest and they'll send it back it's not correct you have to redo it you might have to be fingerprinted what three times <laughs> probably <laughs> fingerprinted yeah. three <laughs> times <laughs> Um, and we did our home study. That was a big thing, too. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, okay. so, and that's not a very fast process, I right. would say. So, so that's where they come and look at your home, at where your you home. live. Okay. Yeah. okay. And ask you questions all the way to the day you were born. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, what's going on in your, in your life? What did you do? How did you grow up? All of those things. So um, I would say, yeah, the paperwork and the home study, we mm -hmm. probably were six months in by the time we completed that. Okay. Um, and, and we haven't even met a family, looked at a family, looked at a child. This is just starting the process of adoption. So that's the biggest hurdle. And you're paying at this point as well, correct? Um, not even the adoption agency. That was just to get the home study really okay. together. So okay. a lot of this paperwork is even before like approaching the uh, adoption. Okay. Team. So wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah. But you have to stuff. redo it. Yeah pretty much the same paperwork once you connect with an adoption gotcha. agency. Okay. Because you have to have an adoption specialist who will do your home study most yeah. of the time. They're separate from agencies. Mm -hmm. um, and anything. so, right, so you get an adoption specialist and they do your home study, they do all that. Then they kind of refer you to an agency gotcha. and you work with the agency in which you start a lot of that paperwork all oh. over again. <laughs> and get so was it know them. exciting yeah. while you're doing the paperwork? Nervous? Um, Frustrating, I guess, the paperwork, but <laughs> mm -hmm. excited to know that we we're gonna get closer to, to our ultimate goal to, to to parent. Right. When yes, when we were getting closer because the um she has to come out, the adoption sessions had to come out several times. So yeah, each visit she's like, Everything looks good, you know, y'all look great. So yes, that's exciting, like, okay, mm -hmm. we're getting closer. Right, right. Um and so probably I was most excited when we actually connected with a, um, agency, an agency, an adoption agency. Um, and where was that one located? In Texas. Okay. Yeah. So why, um, why did y'all have to choose Texas instead of here in Tennessee? Tennessee. Um, there, I would say there were several agencies to choose from here, but they weren't open to same-sex adoption at least. And, um, what were some of the reasons they would give exactly? Huh? We contacted several agencies, yeah. and most of them would say um, that they don't have experience working with same-sex um, couples. Mm -hmm. So they would refer us to someone else who didn't work with same-sex right. couples either. Yeah. Um, and then some would just not respond. Okay. Um, wow. So we never wow. actually talked to an agency in Tennessee right that was open and had experience working with same-sex couples. Um, and so when we talked to our adoption specialist, she was like, yeah, I don't was really she have... located in Tennessee? She's located okay. in Tennessee. Yeah. She works at the Jewish Family Center. Okay. And so they're big advocates of LGBT, mm -hmm. same-sex um, couples. And so she has a list, of course, because she works with same-sex couples a lot. And she said, yeah, she doesn't have any listings in Tennessee. So she gave us listings in other states. Um, and there were several other states that had them. And Tennessee just was the best. I mean, Texas ended up being the best agency. We felt comfortable yes. with them. Okay. Um, and so that's how we ended up going with them. How many times did y'all have to go down to Texas during the process before 
Never. Oh, never. Yeah. Okay. So everything was able to be done. That's that's mm-hmm. kind so of virtual email. email. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was another reason we went with them because there was another state we were going to work with, Georgia. and they wanted us to come down several okay. times, okay. come to some conferences, right? And of course, before the before we would even link up um, oh, wow. with a family, yeah. they wanted to meet okay. and discuss things, and so. We knew that we would have to go down and meet the family and then go for the adoption. So we didn't want to go with the agency that was going to require us to do right. several visits before. And Texas didn't require. We did a um, video. Did we do a video with the agency? I know we did a phone conference. I think we did a video. For like some hours. Yeah. Okay. Um, where they go through the process. But they understand, they, they understand that, that they don't want you to have to travel before right. you are going to really have to travel. Right. 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 That was good. So will they take physicals and stuff from doctors here? Yes, they will. will. But it was our doctor that was a a mess. Uh Are they still your doctor? No. Um, (laughs) Well, no, you can talk about that because that's that's part of it. That was oh my. They need to be confident. You know, they need to know what's going on. Read my chart. I think we talked about this a while back. Is that you know I've been a patient here almost ten years and you don't even know no what diagnosis I've had five years ago. Like what are you doing? Like yeah. I know you had two different experiences with adoption. Um, can you tell us a little bit about um, the journey to finally um, having and, and adopting Olivia? Well, the, <laughs> I think it started off good um, because you have to create a profile book and it's kind of like you're selling yourself to parents to, um, to become parents. <laughs> It is, you have to, but you have to get them to say, yeah. you know, that they are comfortable enough just in looking at a book right. and you, mm-hmm. that they're comfortable enough to say, hey, I might want them to right. parent my child. And that's a big, you know, that's a, huge that's a lot. Yeah. Yes. And so they, it's called a profile book. And so we were excited to do our profile book and send it out. And we were getting good responses, positive responses. Um and so um, in, I think, March, we ended up March of, what year were we in, 2016? Yes, March of 2016, we got a um, response from a birth mother who said she would love to talk with us. Um, she loved our profile book, um, and she would be willing to consider us as parents for her. Um, she didn't know the sex of her child at that time, but she was due in a month, so she was due. Yeah. She called, contacted the agency in March, and um, was going to be due in April. April. Yeah. Um, so we met over the phone. We didn't have to go to Texas, so that was a good thing. But we did meet with her, talk to her over the phone. Um, did so, we send pictures or video? So I have a question. So if she time. didn't know the sex, and I don't know if she was, you know, getting her regular checkup. How did? How did the agency basically do a physical or do everything before? Because, you know, how did you know with her being due in a month that, you know, everything was okay with the pregnancy? Right. So um, the agency does a thorough check of the birth parents as well. And so this particular mom um, had went to a, like, was a health department. Mm -hmm. And so she had got her pregnancy test there or verification. And so she had the paperwork from there. And she showed that to the agency. And they will take that initially. And so once you are accepted, then they expect you to go to a primary care doctor, get a, you know, a, a, a ultrasound to find okay. out the sex and all of that work up. Right, so okay. initially they go ahead and let you in. And especially because she was expedited because she was due in about a month. Okay. So they, they wanted to um, expedite it. So they accepted the health department um, paperwork, basically. So y'all found out in March? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So when you had your baby shower, when was when was the first baby shower? April. April. Okay, yeah. so we did your baby shower shower in April. Mm-hmm. Was that the week before? It was a after? week or two it before was she was supposed before. to be due. Yeah, about mm-hmm. two weeks. Okay. Yeah. Right, and so it was probably well the week of. She called. Well, kind of leading up to that, she had been calling and was having some issues yeah. and money wise and they're not supposed to birth, birth parent is not supposed to contact you directly, directly about money right, right. right um so of course i'm a social worker so i kind of <laughs> know some of that uh you know sometimes people try to take advantage of the right. system so i just referred her back to the agency and you know told them to let us know if there's something truly that she needs and we right. would get the money to them 
Um, so it never panned out. Everything that she was saying, they were like, no, it's, it's not. Okay. That's not um, really true. And so um, probably the week of, she was calling us and saying, I don't feel comfortable. I'm going to tell the agency I don't want to do this. Because basically we wouldn't. they wouldn't give her some money. Because they told us that they're not going to give her the money. We're not going to. They're not going to ask us for it, and they're not going to give it to her because she had misused some funds, basically. Gotcha. And so she wanted us to tell them to give her the money, yeah. or she oh, wasn't wow. going to have, give oh, us. Oh, wow. Okay. And, of course, I'm like, you know, we're like, uh, we want to do everything right, to, right. to make it right and make it happen. But it but seems a little, yeah. Really yeah. Really yeah. So with the first, with this first um I guess contractual relationship that y'all had for the first birth mother. How how much responsibility do y'all have? Because I've, I've heard, you know, and even talking to y'all that I guess you have to pay some expenses. Some um, is it like some some living. of their rent, living expenses, mm-hmm. or whatever. How much? I mean, not how much money did y'all spend, but projected. Uh, what what did we have to take like, care of for her? A month? Did you take care of a month of her yes. living expenses or a month? We ended up paying for a deposit for an apartment mm-hmm. because she didn't have anywhere to live. So we paid. And when they have other children, of course, you want to take care of the other children. So we we gave her enough for a deposit for an apartment, a cell phone, mm-hmm. um, and some personal hygiene, right. food, clothes for um, the babe, her other children, as well as herself. Wow. Yeah. Um, okay. And so we pay that. You kind of you pay it month to month, depending on what they need, and they okay. put it on a card okay. and give it to the parent. And that's how they knew that she. And she then she's only to supposed to it. spend it on certain things. Yeah. And they track the card, so that's how they know that or knew that she had misused it, spending it on oh, other things. Okay. Um, and so yes, we did come out of pocket um, with her, not a lot because right. birth parents expenses can be up to ten thousand oh, dollars um, that was the projection they said that ten thousand ten thousand even for just a month no just, no, oh, for, just, a month, just for just for over the duration for, of yeah, the it can be up okay. to yeah. hers yeah. wasn't going to be that much because yeah, it's only yeah. a month okay. yeah. but you do have to ensure that they're taken care of post adoption as well yeah. so okay. you have to ensure that whatever is needed like rent you would have to pay enough for six weeks post adoption because okay. you don't want to just take the baby and then leave and then, them right. yeah. and then, especially okay. again when they have other children right. um, okay. yeah. and so we had paid for we had not paid for the post we okay. had only paid for the first month okay. um, to so help the week her. of she called you and said she didn't feel comfortable she was saying she didn't feel comfortable and she wanted us to tell them to give her the money and she would she knows how to spend her money and all this stuff but of course like I said, we, we just called the agency and told her she kept calling. And then finally she called the agency the week that she was due yeah. and pretty much said. And, uh, and she wasn't following through with her doctor's appointments. And that's okay. kind of when I was just like, mm, this is not good right. you know, right, right. prior to that. Because they wanted her, they have you go to a specific doctor right. in whatever city right. that you're in in Texas. And she wanted to go to her, her doctor. a different doctor. Okay. Right. So, so was it kind of a double-edged sword, um, meaning you're disappointed that you, you know, you have went through this process and now you can't get a, you know, she says no, but then also, well, there were some warning signs there as well. So, um, that dichotomy, I just can't imagine how that would feel, you know, with being let down on one hand, but then kind of, well, we, we saw some signs. Mm, Yeah. Um, you know, for me, it was just like, okay, the money spent again, you know, right. mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I'm like, this is a savior because this baby wasn't for us, right. you know, and uh, I don't think we were too down about it too long. I mean, we were upset, right. but yeah. uh, we took a, a day or a weekend, we I think. We went to the botanical mm-hmm. gardens. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we took a day to yeah. re- you know, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> reevaluate. Yeah, to reevaluate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And think, do you want to do this yeah. again? Because oh, I'm like, oh my gosh. Can so this how, happen soon, again? how soon did the, um, the adoption agency tell you about another um, child that you could potentially be able to adopt? You? It was, yes, it was you. It was a week okay. of pride. Uh, okay. Yes, because yeah. we were at spirituality <laughs> night. So not, okay. yeah. Yeah. Many yeah. months passed. Mm-hmm. About yeah. 60 days. 
and it took us day. about a month to let them know that we were still going to go forward because gotcha. you have you have to tell them right. do you want to be put back out there right, right. so i think we told them in may go ahead and okay. in june they called us yeah because we had to update our home study it was every year oh yeah had to update they, that yeah. so we were kind of bummed out because of the first unsuccessful adoption and then we we're like oh, then our home study we expired. Had to, uh, yeah, we yeah. got to do that. We got to pay more more money for our home study, but wow. we just went ahead and just trusted God and did it. Right. right. And it worked. Yeah. Because if we had yeah. not redone our got our home study re um, evaluated uh -huh. and told them to put us back out there in May, we may have missed right. um, yeah. Olivia's mom. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. So yeah. Yes. Okay. So another home study, another process. So you found out about. Baby Olivia is the potential to be her mother in June. Mm -hmm. So y'all had to sign another agreement and pay expenses. Mm -hmm. But June, July, August, September, and then October. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So about five months. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and five months, with Olivia's mom, it definitely it just started out and it felt much better because yeah. first off this mother um has other children okay. she was working okay. she was you know she was working with the agency and they have a separate um division where they do family services mm -hmm. so she was in that division just getting oh. services because yeah. she wanted she didn't want to initially put her child up for adoption she wanted to try to parent and so she lost her job mm -hmm. um and so then she had to go to a shelter so mm -hmm. she was staying at a shelter with her kids and then finally she said she just yeah mm -hmm. she couldn't do it it was too much um and so she wanted to talk to them and maybe move to the adoption side um wow. and so yeah. yeah very i can't yeah. imagine for us of course i'm right. so grateful that yeah. she made that yeah. decision yeah. Yeah. and chose us out of right. you know everybody it was meant to be yeah, yeah. it was definitely because Olivia, which they're going to show pictures, she's sleeping now. Yes. They're gonna show, she, she looks like... Yeah, like she a looks combination like, of both of you guys. Like, like, right out of the <laughs> Right. She's, well, she was in the last video, sleep. Yeah. <laughs> well, wait till you get her personality. You have to say who the personality is. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> all the videos you show on Facebook. Yeah, she's of her a, doing this or her doing that. I can tell. She's a little, uh, yeah. she's not as reserved. No. <laughs> yes, yes, well then, look, I guess that will be it. I think the most, the most energy I've seen Tony exude oh, is, is sports. The other side is just real too. <laughs> yes, you are right. Yes. Yes. Just sports, coaching or playing. Yeah. So baby Olivia has a birthday coming up soon. Yes, yes. And it so, will be a year, September 26th. Wow. So, wow. wow. It, it just went by, oh my yeah, gosh. It's gone by fast. Yes. Right. I feel like we were just in Texas right. wow. getting yeah. her. Right. Yes. Wow. It's crazy. So y'all still in um, in contact or giving her, her birth mother any pictures or any thing at all or did y'all do that for a period of time or well the adoption is an open adoption and it will okay. remain an open adoption okay. but the mother birth mother can choose what that looks like okay. and initially her birth plan was to not have any contact after okay. leaving the hospital and she really she didn't have any contact she didn't want to okay. see her hold her okay. um so um I was able to be in the room, and they gave her the baby, uh, Olivia straight, straight to me. 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 So she okay. never saw her, but we got to talk with her because she wanted to see us before she left yeah. the hospital. Okay. And so, oh my gosh, it was so. I mean, she was she's a she's a good person, a yeah. good mother. She made the best decision I think that she could at that moment, and so yeah. she just thanked us again for taking wow. care of her. And she said, just send her a picture once we leave the hospital. And so I sent a picture once mm -hmm. we left. Um, and I asked her for a picture if she if she didn't mind because she sent a picture of herself so I could show a woman when she gets older, okay. but she didn't want to send one. Okay. And so she said she mm -hmm. didn't have any other contact and she wow. hasn't. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so one last question for me and then we'll, we'll kind of I get tears. I get I get emotional. So I'm always like, trying to get the tears up. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, a, have you guys? I, I just heard you say that you will show her, show Olivia a picture when she gets older. Have you guys talked about at what age you would tell her? Yeah, we talk about it, but um, we haven't come to a concrete age. Okay. We're going to have to go kind of okay. on how, how mature she is. She is. Yeah, yeah, what we okay. feel like is the right time, and 
appropriate for her. But we definitely will tell her everything. Right. Gratefully, yeah. we know everything about her mom. Yeah. We got to spend time with her mom in yeah. Texas before That's she had good. the baby. Um, we know about her siblings. And so we will tell her all that. I've started a book with all those memories, so okay. they That's will awesome. be there. Yeah. You um, should have this video. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Facebook will still be around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Social media will still be out there, hopefully. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so one word that describes motherhood for you and one from you. And of course, that's asked by a person who doesn't have kids. <laughs> <laughs> if to break I it down to one word. One word <laughs> I would just say overjoyed. Wow. What about you? Tony? Yeah. I don't have one word. It's ever changing. I okay. mean, that is what it is. You know, one minute, you know, you're just happy and playing. The next minute, she's screaming her head off. <laughs> That's just life. Right. And we're okay with it. You right. know, so you it's it ever changing. Yeah. And so I happy. love her. I love her personality now, and I'll continue to love it as she evolves. So, yeah. So, I always ask, or at the end of all of our videos, we're, we're always asking, what is a takeaway that you would tell um, any parent that wants to parent and aren't able to birth a child? adoption um, whether they're same sex or not because everybody still has the same challenges sometimes mm -hmm. with in vitro or right. adoption or you know just family members having to care for their nephew or mm -hmm. some grandparents caring for their grandchildren um, yeah. what would be a takeaway that you would want people um, to take from this video you share in your story um, I would say one takeaway is it's all about love. So if you have love and you're willing to share that, it doesn't matter where mm -hmm. it comes from, whether it's a natural birth or an adoption or if you're taking care of your grandchild. If you have love, share it with a baby or a child because there are many out there that need it. From right. what Rachel just said, um, there are many kids that need that love, and that's that's all they're looking for. Right. They don't they care don't where, different. right? They, <laughs> right. Don't, they don't care where it comes it, from. That, right. That you aren't the birth parent. If you love and nurture them, that little baby up there, she. If we didn't tell her, she wouldn't know. She right. would love us <laughs> to death and think right. she came from two moms. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> she loves us. And we right. love her back. Right. Yeah. 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 So I think it's just right. all about sharing love, and if you have that. Right. So. And I'll, I'll, I'll say that the great thing is that in June 26, 2017, mm -hmm. um, the United States Supreme Court did um, finally legalize for all same-sex couples to be able to adopt all across the United States and for the birth parents, excuse me, the adoptive parents to be able to have a birth certificate with their names on there jointly instead of it being um, two separate adoptions or two mm -hmm. separate uh, birth certificates, you know, um, mm -hmm. and moving through that, that process. So. That's exciting. Yeah, um, that's really good. Yeah. So just a, that's what a couple months ago. So yeah, the world is moving in a in 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 love, right. which is great. That's which awesome. is great. All right, all right. That's another one. Thank, Thank you guys you. again yeah. for your time, Thank and we really you. appreciate you. you welcoming us into your beautiful home. And Thank you guys for putting this out there and sharing it. Yeah. Hopefully, it encourages someone, yes. um, educates someone. Yes. So, I, mean, yeah. I think it's all about people sharing their stories, yeah. and yeah. It, it gives people energy, mm -hmm. hope, inspiration. Right. right. You know, Absolutely. help each other press through. Don't give up. Yeah. Right. You know. Yeah. All right. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. All right. Okay. Did we say happy birthday to Olivia? <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Olivia! Happy birthday, Olivia.